morning students so today we are going to discuss about phylum platy helminths in the previous class we discussed about phylum tenophora so now we are going to discuss about phylum platy helminths so first you have to know that so how you divide excreted as tenophora into teen means comb so forens means animal so animals are bearing animal what bearing animals comb bearing animals so how the comb bearing animals we call it as the tenophorans like it only in phylum platy helminths uh, we should split so how we will split the so first word uh, platy platy means uh, flat you already know that uh, flat means so flat i know one more word helmin or helmet helmin means worm helmin means singular worm we commonly call it as a platy means a flat and a helmin means worm so next followed by some characteristic feature we should discuss one by one so we have already discussed in a previous class also so first of all we will always start with the basis of classification so in the previous class also we have started with this basis of classification so today also we will start with this some basic characteristic features from basis of classification so what is that first base of classification character so we will start with this habitat habitat in the sense the animal where it is to be living or where it will live so first one habitat flat worms flat worms are mostly majority flat worms are mostly parasites as you already know that what is meant by parasites so the animal which is organism which is living in that another organism for their nutrition so the type of organisms are called uh, parasites so these are mostly parasites and uh, some are free living some are free living some are free living free living in the sense either you can write it here only free living in the sense uh, either terrestrial we already know that the animal which is living on that uh, land surface right so terrestrial some are terrestrial or some are fresh water form like planarian some are fresh water or some of the plants are marine in habitat really the mix of so different uh, animals which are to be having sharing the different habitats some are terrestrial on the land surface some are fresh water forms and uh, some are marine in habitat so different habitats to be there but uh, in 100% 90% or above percentage of the plants which are living in other organisms either in the intestine or in the liver or in any part of the body so in such type of animal so that type of animal we call as a host body in such type of host body so different platforms may live and they may cause a different disorders also right so such type of organisms we call as parasites so first characteristic feature this is based on basis of classification we will consider as basis of classification you have to remember one characteristic feature so this is based on habitat so after completion of this character so we will move to another very important characteristic feature so what is that level of organization level of organization so usually these animals exhibiting organ level i have already told you that while studying this uh, basis of classification so first we have started with this uh, levels of organization 
So first we level is the cellular tissue level, then followed by organ level of organization. So for the first time in the animal kingdom, so these animals exhibiting organ level of organization. So you just remember that. So all platforms exhibiting organ level of organization. This is very important characteristic feature in all the platform for the first time in the whole animal kingdom exhibiting organ level of organization. So this is what very important. So this is another important characteristic feature. So then next move to third important characteristic feature symmetry. You consider another base of classification as a symmetry. In the previous class, what about the symmetry in tenophores? Usually biradial symmetry. So on what basis we are calling it as biradial? It is exhibiting in a two different way. So one will also consider as radial and other one as bilateral. So on what basis we are calling it as radial symmetry? By presence of eight rows of ciliated comb plates we will find. So by presence of comb plates na, we are called as radial symmetry. So in all the plane, in all the plane, when you cut an organism through the central axis, you will get a two equal halves. So that is what radial symmetry by appearance of eight rows of ciliated complex. Along with that, you should remember what is the main important role by presence of these complex. So this complex helps in locomotion. We have already studied that these complex helps in locomotion. Like this only bilateral symmetry. On what basis uh, this is also exhibiting bilateral symmetry? So based on so by branching of a gastrovascular canal. Usually, what are different parts you found in that animal? So mouth will be there as usual, pharynx is there, pharynx is followed by stomach is there and stomach when it will branch na, it may open into two anal pores instead of one anus. So that's what those animals come under incomplete digestive tract. Are we name of So like it only here also animals should be exhibiting a type of symmetry. So what type of symmetry is there here? Bilateral symmetry. Bilateral symmetry. So you have to remember two main important uh, uh, special things to be there in this phylum. What are those two things mean? So for the first time organ level organization exhibiting and second special thing bilateral symmetry is starting from platforms only. Is it or not? Indeed examination they may ask in whole animal kingdom from which final for the first time exhibiting organ level of organization means you should remember that starting from platforms or starting from platic element. Both names are same. Right? You just remember in bracket the platic elements nothing but the platforms. Platforms. When you will split that word platy and helmets, you will get again flat work meaning. So, this is bilateral symmetry. So, bilateral in the sense of only in one radial plane you are getting two equal halves, not more than one plane. So, not more than one radial plane. If you are getting more than one radial plane, two equal halves means either biradial symmetry, it may be, or radial symmetry. But you consider from flatty elements to cordata including human beings. So you are getting only two equal halves only when you cut through the central axis only in one radial plane. So I have already told you that in the yesterday's class through in this direction only you are getting two mirror image halves. So not in other plane. So like it only that is starting from bilateral symmetry starting from flat. This is also another case of classification character in that matrix. Right. So next to follow back, so fourth one, silo or body cavity. Starting from phylum porifera onwards. So phylum porifera, then followed by cilantrata, then followed by tenophora, then followed by flatting elements. All these animals exhibiting a silomic condition. A silom, a in the sense absence, absence of silom. So usually silom where you will find between the body wall and elementary canal or guts. 
so here so both the three layers together ectoderm is there endoderm is there and mesoderm is there but this mesoderm in between the ecto and endoderm this is not forming any cavity so that's what we call as a type of animals as a coelomates a coelomates means so first thing we have to remember platforms then followed by uh, remaining lower invertebrate phyla will come so first thing a coelomates means uh, you have to remember as platforms bilateral symmetry for the first time means uh, platform for the first time all the level organization means all these first times only na a coelomate is there in porifera so actually starting from this only so they may ask in the neat examination So, a coelomic condition in four options they may give: annelida, arthropoda, corneta, and then followed by platform. Is it or not? So, option of course, option will be so this platform only. So, like that, you should remember this basic characteristic thing. So, one more important uh, basis of classification. So, what is that? Uh, body plan. So you have already taken in the previous class, na. So body plan we may divide into cell aggregate plan, blind sac plan, and the tube within tube plan. So blind sac plan in the sense so one end is open and other end is closed one. So it means that mouth itself acts as a both mouth as well as anus. So why? Because another end is not there. Usually, what that mouth function? Ingestion of food, taking in of the food. So that taking in of the food by that mouth only. Along with that, after digestion process, so undigested food matter will get formed in intestine. So that will also come out through that same opening only. So that's what on that basis. So these animals will also exhibiting blind sac plan. Are you getting my point? So this is very important. Body plan also, right? So after that, the body plan. So we we'll discuss one more base of classification. So next, we'll just write it down. Sixth characteristic feature. So sixth we'll start with this uh, skeleton. Usually skeleton you will not find. If it is to be the means uh, so it is to be in the form of a hydroskeleton. Hydroskeleton you will find. So parenchyma will be there between this mesoderm. So that parenchyma only maintains this. Uh, Uh, what we call it as a skeletal system. So that's what true skeleton is not there. So that is in the form of a hydroskeleton. So this usually skeletal system is absent along with that uh, circulation process is also absent or circulatory system is absent or circulation is absent. Along with that one more respiration. Respiration. Had not developed. Had not developed in the sense absence only, not well developed. Had not developed. Body wall. So we'll discuss next. So next we can take it as a body wall. We'll discuss one by one. So next one, body wall. Usually three jaw layers to be there. So one more important thing. Think you have to remember for the first time in the animal kingdom. So triploblastic nature you are finding from this phylum only. All special characters are starting from this phylum only. Is it or not? Bilateral symmetry, a coelomic condition, or if you take the another one, organ level organization. Along with that, another important character is body wall. Usually, body wall consists of consists of outer ectoderm. Outer layer is called ectoderm. Middle mesoderm and inner endoderm. And inner endoderm. So three germ layers to be formed during the embryonic development in human beings also. So when the fetus will get formed, so when the fusion of male and female gametes takes place, so where within the mother womb, 
So where in the mother female reproductive tract, especially fallopian tube, where the fertilization takes place in the human female means you should remember as in fallopian tube. In which part of the fallopian tube? When you will come to second year, na, you can easily come to know this uh, female reproductive system, how the reproduction is there in the human being. So first you should remember that in the fallopian tube, you will find a ampullary isthmic junction. So where the fertilization takes place, after that, uh, so it will undergo cleavage. We have heard that word or not, the cleavage. So it may undergo rapid mitotic division. So we may call it as cleavage. After cleavage, so it may get converts into 32 cells, a mass called blastocyst. Or we will also call it as a blastula. So that the blastula may fall from this uh, tube. Fallopian tube, it may get attached to the endometrium of this uterus. Mother womb we will call now. So where it will get attached and thereby it may undergo this gastrulation process. Means single layer blastula may get converts into triple layered gastrula. Have you heard that word gastrulation? Gastrulation in the sense formation of a gastrula from single layered blastula into triple layer. So, whatever this gastrulation process takes place within mother womb, due to formation of that three germ layers only, that is nothing but ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. In human being, I am talking about this. So, in human being, what will happen? Ectoderm gives rise to some organs. Endoderm gives rise to brain, nerve curve and something and then followed by mesoderm, skeletal system may get formed, right, heart may get formed, muscles may get formed. So that whole body when we are in the mother womb, that is to be formed by only three germ layers. That's what these three germ layers are very important for the formation of one complete fetus within the mother womb. Like that only three germ layers formation takes place starting from platic element itself. In platic elements also, ectoderm, middle mesoderm, and inner endoderm will get formed. And later on, it may undergo development. And later on, it may start completing its metamorphosis or any other larval stage it will complete. How the metamorphosis will be there in the different animal. Like it's only different larval stages to be there. So how we have uh, studied in that Tinochora cidipid larva will be there. After completion of that larva, it may develop into Egg ones then. So this is how the so development will be that. So like they told me, you have to remember that. So starting from the platy elements onwards, na, three germ layers will get formed. That's what so such type of animals we call as triploblastic. Triplos means how many? Three. Such type of animals we call as a triploblastic animals. Triploblastic nature is also starting from platyworms only. Right? Are you getting my point? These are very important and basic characteristic features. Grade of organization based on that one character over and then silo, one character over, then body plan, another character over, then followed by germ layer or body wall, another character over. So some four to five basic characteristic features you should remember based on this basis of classification. So then next we will move to next important characteristic page. So we will just write it down next characteristic page. Digestive system. So here also digestive fact. So you know, digestive tract means elementary canal, starting from mouth to anus. But we are even not going from mouth to anus. It is to be incomplete. Digestive tract is incomplete. Incomplete if present. You should add this suffix as if present. If present in the sense, in some platforms, you will not find. You will not find digestive tract only. Then how they will get the nutrition? Through general body surface by absorption process. Some parasites you can take. Some parasites in the sense of what is that common human parasite? Tinea solium. Have you heard that word of tapeworm? Tapeworm. So tapeworm is one of the platform belonging to this platic element only. So this is a uh, which is to be living in the human small intestine. It may cause a disease called a teniasis. 
so stomach or abdominal pain will come now. so that is a related disorder to this pnea solium so this is how they so if it is to be living in the host body means it may cause a disease but in that subset of organism you will not find the digestive tract how they will live in the host body then by absorbing the by absorbing the nutrients directly directly in the sense uh, this digestive tract only not there means these will not undergo digestion process why because of so we already have this digestion process in the small intestine in the small intestine already digestion over means uh, so we have small molecules small particles like the glucose we have while eating polysaccharides we have so after reaching to the intestine after digestion process it may get broken down into small pieces small units we call as monosaccharides like glucose units what they want directly glucose units only so those glucose units they can easily absorb it means no need of digestive tract only and anyway they are getting nutrients directly now without the digestion process that's what in such type of parasites in most of the parasites so you will not find element can is it or not so one line information you just write it down in a tape form in tape form digestive tract is absent and one more important thing you have to remember almost the parasites may undergo and aerobic respiration are you getting my point parasites may undergo and aerobic respiration and aerobic in the sense what in absence of oxygen also they have this capability to undergo respiration process in as we have anaerobic respiration in as we have anaerobic respiration we have when only a certain condition when we'll go for a heavy exercise we need much more oxygen supply so if we are not getting means sir our skeletal muscle so skeletal muscle they may undergo anaerobic respiration that's what uh, the lactic acid formation takes place at the end of the digestion process so is it or not sorry after that the formation of lactic acid that lactic acid when it may directly from blood it will be reaching into the muscles means sir, immediately we will get a muscle pain of running 200 meter 300 meters na immediately so this is what we call it as different muscles in our body after exercise na so they may get immediately fatigue is it or not so that fatigue is due to accumulation of lactic acid at the end of this anaerobic respiration after that excess lactic acid may remains in the muscles means once again that may converts into glycogen and that may stores in the skeletal muscle itself as a energy source is it or not this is how the anaerobic respiration is there in uh, higher vertebrates na but here only the free living organism we are finding aerobic respiration but in most of the parasites we are finding anaerobic respiration that is a fermentation process or less lactic acid formation for takes place so in one type of anaerobic respiration ethyl alcohol may get released in another type of anaerobic respiration lactic acid may get formed so two different types of anaerobic respiration taking place so that's what you just remember one important thing parasites may undergo anaerobic respiration this is one line information about this uh, digestive system what about this digestion process that i have already told you that in tenophore and ciliate uh, digestion is both extracellular and intracellular so what about digestion process here intracellular digestion process. within the cell only so here digestion process is intracellular you just remember digestion is intracellular so this is one line information about the physiology part starting with this digestive system are you getting my point so next one another very important character excretory system excretory system usually up to this tenophora there is no specific uh, structures uh, to undergo this uh, removal of excretory waste material so usually how they will go for this excretion process then through general body surface only is it or not but starting from platelet limits you are finding a peculiar structure so we have a pair of kidney 
you can consider whole urinogenoidal system is there. We have a pair of kidney, uh, we have a pair of pipes we call as ureter, we have one bag called a urinary bladder and a through another opening called a urethra. So how this whole urinogenoidal system is there for the excretion and osmoregulation. The excretion in the sense of uh, remola, nitrogenous waste product like uh, ammonia, urea or uric acids. Like that only, here also excretory system consists of specialized structures like the kidneys. Not kidneys, like kidneys. Is it or not? These are lower invertebrates now. These have the level best. So these have structures, specialized structures called uh, solenocytes. You just remember this word, uh, the mass can remain of safety. What are the excretory organs in a platform or platical base? So, lanocytes, or we will also call it as a protonephridia. Protonephridia. Or we will also call it as flame cells. Flame cells. Do you know flame? So, that is to have a shape like that. Based on that, also they have mentioned as a flame cells. So all these are the same things. And uh, what is this main important role by these presence of special structures? It may undergo excretion and osmoregulation. They may undergo removal of the excretory products called an excretion and uh, osmoregulation. Osmo means what? Osmosis means uh, water balance. Is it or not? Water movement we call as osmosis. So this is to be maintaining water and the salt balance in the body. Are you getting my point? In our body also, a pair of kidneys to be there and the structural and functional units of the kidney we call as nephrons. Have you heard that word nephrons? Nephrons we don't have means uh, there is no filtration process. No filtration will start suffering from a uh, uh, disease condition, different disease conditions then. So how this kidney function will be there in the human being and other vertebrate like it only in this platform that function is done by flame cells, so lanocytes or by protonephridia. You should remember that osmoregulation means uh, maintenance of water and a salt balance in the body. For example, you may have heard about this, uh, some important hormones if we are suffering from uh, diuresis. You heard word that uh, diuresis or a diabetes insipidus, no, diabetes mellitus, you know, type 2 type of diabetes mellitus. Usually after getting the age of 45, 15, uh, they may start suffering from diabetes. We call it as a diabetes, there are majorly two different types of diabetes may come. So one type of disease is called a diabetes insipidus. When you will come to excretion part, human excretory system, na, you can easily uh, understand about this, uh, what is meant by diabetes insipidus, diabetes mellitus in detail, you will study that. So no need. So but the only thing you have to remember, how we are maintaining the water and salt balance, like that only these animals also have this type of specialized cells for that excretion and osmoregulation. So this is another important character from excretion part. So next moving to Another very important character for physiology, digestive system over, then excretory system over, then followed by another very important nervous system. Already we have discussed about the respiratory, circulatory and skeletal system, usually at not developed or absent cell, then followed by neural system. So how the neural system is there? So the neural system is a ladder like. You write it down in one line. Underline this word ladder type of nervous system. Ladder type of nervous system. Do you know ladder means? Usually. So how this ladder type of nervous system means? You should remember that. So this may having, just note it down, this uh, a small diagram will be there. So this is showing how the nervous system will be looking like a ladder. This is one animal I am drawing in that, how the nervous system is there. So nervous system usually consisting
So this is what little it will be looking like lad or later. So steps to be there in this is it or not? So these steps we record as write it down transverse nerves. We call it as a transverse nerves. And this uh, bulb like structure we are finding the in the anterior most part of the body. So these appear out of bulbs. We call it as a anterior ganglia. Ganglia is nothing but a group of nerves. Nerves we call it as a ganglia. How we call it as a group of persons as gang like they call like ganglia with that group of nerves. So group of nerves or anterior ganglia, a base structure. Two are there. Together also we will consider as a brain. Why? Because here how we have this complex brain, huh? like that complex it is not there. Simple type of a pair of anterior ganglia we are finding. So we will consider as a brain. In nervous system, a pair of anterior nerve ganglia is there. Then followed by transverse nerve cells you will find, nerve network you will find. Then followed by this pipes are there. Right? So these two pipes will consider as nerve cords. What type of nerve cords? Longitudinal. You consider pelvis as longitudinal nerve cords. A pair of longitudinal nerve cords will find. Transverse nerves will find, and along with that, in the anterior most region, a pair of anterior ganglia or that ganglia are major role in controlling center. That's what we will consider as a brain. This is what the simple type of nervous system we will find. So, this type of nervous system is looking like a ladder. So, that's what you understand that word ladder type of nervous system these animals have. Exhibiting. Very important. That's what. At least if you are not remembering these diagrams, at least you just remember that word as ladder type of nervous system. So next to followed by another very important character. Reproduction. So here also hermaphrodites, as you already know that hermaphroditic condition means. Means both sexes are in one individual only. Okay. Like how earthworm is there now. When it comes to anelida, you will study about this anelidans or especially earthworms. Earthworms are also hermaphrodites only. Like it only here also, these animals are also hermaphrodites or bisexual. I have already told them another name. What is that? Monoecious, correct. Monoecious. Monoecious. Sexes are not separate. For that word meaning, it may give hermaphrodite, bisexual, or monoecious condition. Sexes are not separate means the both are present in same individual only. You should remember like that. So next one. Fertilization. What type of fertilization you will find? So fertilization usually, as you already know that what is meant by internal fertilization. Internal means taking place. Fusion of male and female gametes taking place in 
uh, within the organism. So that's what we call as uh, internal fertilization. But uh, other some other platforms also exhibiting cross fertilization. Have you heard this word cross fertilization? Cross means what? Fertilization or nothing but fusion of male and female gametes of different individuals of same species. Fusion of male and female gamete of two different individuals of same species. Are you getting my point? This is what we call as a cross fertilization. In future also, you should remember, you should differentiate what is mean by external fertilization, what is mean by internal fertilization, and what is mean by cross fertilization. Are you getting my point? So, like that only, in some platforms, in some platforms, like in bracket, you write it down, tapeworms. In tapeworms, you will find self fertilization. Again, one more. In bracket, so you just note it down. Tapeworm will be exhibiting self fertilization. Self means fusion of male and female gametes of same individual. In one individual only. Uh, gamete formation is taking place. Male gamete is also producing, female gamete is also producing, and a fusion is occurring in that same individual only. So, such type of fertilization we call as self fertilization. Fusion of male and female gamete within the same individual. That type of fertilization method is called self fertilization. Just remember self fertilization. So after fertilization, next followed by development. So what type of develop, development is there in this animal? So next one. Well as development. Development. Development is direct or indirect. Usually, some are exhibiting direct development also, but the majority of these animals exhibiting indirect development. Majority means uh, we should always consider majority of it. Huh? So, indirect development by ex exhibiting many larval forms. In single individual only exhibiting more than one larval form. Right? So, what is that larval form? So, we'll discuss now. So, for example, you consider in a liver fluid. First one. Liver fluid. In liver fluid, there are some important larval forms you will find. So, one of the larva is called Miracidium. Remember these larval forms, ma? Very important. Miracidium larva or sporocyst larva. Sporocyst larva or radia. Radia larva. Sarcaria. Sarcaria larva, Metasarcaria larva. So these different types of larval forms you will find in liver fluid. Some platforms like liver fluid. Second one in a tape forms. Some important larval forms you will find in tape forms. Tape forms also exhibiting some important larval forms. So first one. Anthosphere larva, O N C H O, O N C H O S P H E or Anthosphere. Anthosphere larva. Another very important larva called Hemisphere 
hexagon larva h e x a c a n k h hexagon larva hexagon larva and one more important larva of certain kind in the forms i'll write it here third one as cysty circus larva cysty circus larva so these are different larval forms we will find some larval forms we will find in labor group the heart there in take take forms or three larval forms we will find there are four to five to five so this is indicated that uh, majority of the uh, what we call it as parasites matter for indirect development by undergoing more than one larval form and last but not the least another very important characteristic feature some heart forms some platforms have high regeneration capacity some platforms have high regeneration capacity like the bracket uses for the down planaria and like this for the planaria they are so many times in see Usually they will not concentrate this in the exam, but you will in see the exam you may get one mark by remembering this one area exhibiting high regeneration capacity. Uh, so next followed by the so last week the classification. You just write it down how many classes will be there instead of giving direct example and. Giving class names, class name with one one example, so that may be helpful. Classification. So, on what basis these animals classified into different classes? So, based on mode of life. Mode of life means depends on adaptation where they are living. So there are mainly three classes. First one is called Tarpelaria. First class name is called Tarpelaria. So these are platforms. These platforms are living in fresh water, usually fresh water. It means that we will also write it as free living. Are you getting a point? So, in first character only, I wrote as a free living. Free living in the sense either terrestrial or marine or fresh water. So, usually in an area belonging to fresh water. Is it or not? So, one best example for these animals an area. P L E N K R I A planaria. Planaria scientifically called the Dalmatia. Those dogs of names are like this only. Dalmatia, planaria, planaria, Dalmatia. That's it. Second class you just put it down. Trematoda. Trematodans. Trematodans. Either exo or endo parasites. Exo parasites means attached to the host body outside, external. Endo parasites means within the host body, like the living in the intestine or living in the stomach or any part of the body, either in the liver or in the uh, pancreas or any any part of the body. Endo parasites or exo parasites. Uh, one best example for this trematoda, so just write it down. Uh, right here. First example. Cystostoma. Cystostoma scientifically called. Commonly called. Cystostoma scientifically called. Commonly called. 
blood flow ya value ke blood flow that name itself says why it will like blood flow second example fasciola hepatica you heard this word fasciola hepatica so commonly called liver flow where it will live the name itself says liver of different animals right so liver of different kind of sheep or goats it will find in their liver so when humans feed on the liver goats or sheep so especially when they will eat this liver na so human beings may also get that disease called a fasciolosis are you getting my point so this will cause a disease called a fasciolosis spelling is very important f a s c i o l i a s i s fasciolosis will commonly called a liver rot disease have you heard that word liver rot liver rot disease you just remember one line information about the liver flow if it may enters into the vertebrate animal or especially human being it may cause a disease called especially in sheep and goats only this will cause the liver rot disease this is to be damaging a part of cells liver cells to be there so liver is made up of specialized cells called a part of cells right so this may cause damage to the liver and that may cause fasciolosis or liver rot disease So these two are best example for this class of hematodes, and uh, you know, just write it down. Last one or third class, right? Third class. Third only now. Next take down. Third class. So this is third class. We call it as a cystoda. We call it as a cystoda. Next to the light is only third class. Not being failure or covered. Third class is not that third class. This third class is only. You are always first class people. Cystoda, cystoda. These are endoparasites. No choice. Endoparasites. Endoparasite means specially living within the host body. endoparasite one best example for these class animals tenia solium t e n i a tenia solium ah are you so this will be having shape like a fork you heard that word fork you people are very familiar with that fork so you used to go that uh, saptagiri and all the usually you will get a fork Fork or fork, so we will call it as fork. So fork table one. That is to be. So these animal one more uh, very important uh, special character means uh, they will have specialized structures uh, on their mouth region called uh, hooks and suckers. Hooks helps in attachment and the sucker helps in sucking the nutrition. Are you getting my point? So specialized the uh, hooks and suckers you will find in. tenia solium uh, this is a parasite of a human intestine in human intestine it may live and it may cause a disease called a teniasis teniasis tenia solium and another species of tenia called a tenia sagenata tenia sagenata so this tapeworm will commonly called a beef tapeworm you heard it called a beef anyone no beef tapeworm right so one who will eat beef na they may also get a disease condition so they may also live in that intestine one who will eat a beef so that's what we call as a beef tapeworm and the third uh, last species from this class echinococcus 
Echinococcus Echinococcus granulosus Echinococcus granulosus Commonly called as dog tapeworm Why? Because of this parasite is living in dog, fox, cat, like a different uh, mammals. So that's what uh, we call it as properly dog tape one. So based on their mode of life, we classified as three different classes are there with one or maximum two examples I gave. So in the next class, we'll start with another very important phylum as a helix. Thank you. Have any doubts? No. You are getting points now. What are you writing? Not you can go then, no problem. <laughs> so you have 